Indeed, I'm going to stay on real estate. Charlie Munger, very famous as the, I'm going to call him the sidekick of Warren Buffett. He's warning about the commercial real estate market. Well, look who's here. Kevin O'Leary, the man himself, joining us one more time. Yeah, Kevin, it's great to have you with us. Now, Jamie Dimon says, and I'm quoting now, this part of the banking crisis is over, but it can't be over if you have issues with the commercial real estate market. Is that the big problem now facing the banks, Kevin? It is. I mean, we have a rolling banking crisis in this cycle. What's occurring now is trying to determine what percentage of the 4,500 regional bank branches are next. In other words, go insolvent. And it really comes down to what we've seen for these first three, two of them in California, one in New York. It, it boiled down to, for lack of a better term, idiot management, not understanding quality and duration, very simple. If you don't understand that in banking, why are you banking? That's the only thing you need to know. And in all three cases, they were oblivious to it. And of course, they failed. Now, the real question is, who pays? It's great that Jamie Dimon can step up and the other money center banks, Bank of America and others, may be forced to get those phone calls on Saturday mornings from the Fed saying, look, you guys contribute the most to the FDIC. And we think you should take responsibility and eat this garbage because there's going to be a whole bunch more failures, small, big, different regions, but you eat it, not the shareholders, not the uh, deposit holders, you eat it, you big banks eat this stuff. Now, I wanna put up my hand, because I'm a JP Morgan shareholder, I own shares in JP Morgan, I don't want to eat any more garbage banks. I'm just one shareholder. So No more garbage for me, please, I'm done. Let someone else eat the garbage, not me. So put up the regional banks and their stock price this morning, because as you can see, there's pressure all around. There is a run on the stock of these big regional banks on a scale that suggests that any rescue or any money to either bail them out or pay for them or take them over, it's not going to be there because it's too big a problem. So the banking crisis is on a new leg right now, isn't it? Yes, it's a rolling leg. But I mean, Stuart, let's think about this in practical reality. So a regional bank goes bankrupt. So what? Anybody that had 250000 or less is covered by the FDIC insurance, which is basically paid for by you as a fee payer when you put money into any bank. And so the banks are paying for the banks. The, the point is, idiot management is very expensive. It's not going to shut down the American economy. We need to purge the idiot managers out of the system. There's 4,500 banks. You can't tell me 15 or 20 percent aren't managed by idiots. They never had to do anything for 20 years as rates and the cost of money were zero. And many of them never lived through rapid rate hikes, so they don't know what to do. And clearly, they're not good bankers. We can't keep them around. Okay. They've got to go. In any other sector, when you fail, you get fired. It's OK. Let's whack them. Let's <laughs> shut the banks down and consolidate to super regionals like every other country's done. It's not the end of the world. Everybody relax. This is a very good process. Let them fail. On that note, I'm going to change the subject because I want an update on your plan to build a refinery in the United States. So you made a big deal out of this a couple of weeks ago on this show. Any progress? We'd love to see you build a new refinery in America. Can you do it? Yes. Yes, I can do it. I have three states I'm in dialogue with. The strategy is going to be this. Instead of trying to do what the Chinese pulled off, because you have a supreme leader, he can just mandate we're putting in a $14 billion refinery. We can't do that stateside. We don't have a supreme leader, and we don't have somebody that controls the EPA clearly. However, there are rules. Right now, it looks that three states have existing pipelines. We can build two to $4 billion refineries that can really be useful in these new technologies to sequestering carbon and supply distillates and jet fuel and gasoline and heating oil and everything else we need, because we're in an economy now that's not just in time inventory. We need just in case energy. I think I can get that done on a bipartisan basis underneath the threshold of EPA, so I don't have to deal with them. I can do that in at least three states, it looks like. I'm all over it. The states themselves have to contribute towards the feasibility studies and then I can fund the debt and the equity on a sovereign wealth basis. So that's how we're going to do it, Stuart. That's a wonderful thing, and we wish you the very best of luck. I'd love to see you come back and tell us about this one. But before we go, I just want to bring up something that I've been arguing about all morning. I do not want to see a pause 
in the development of artificial intelligence. I know there is a, a call for a pause to sort of tamp down on development. I oppose that because I think that would just give free reign to the rogue actors and we don't know what they're doing in secret. I want our guys to compete, get the best AI and win for us. Where are you in this? 100%, 100%, let the market be the market. Let the brightest and the best compete. This is simply a service that people will go to based on its functionality and its use in vertical cases in business. There's no shutting it down. It's, the, the genie's out of the bottle, so let's compete. The Chinese are going at it. There's other jurisdictions as well. This is not a situation where we want to let somebody that's got a big number of followers on social media tell us that we shouldn't be doing this or that. The market determines it. Let everybody decide whether they want to use it or not, and let the market decide. I'm 100 percent. Let's just go, go, go. Let's be number one, use this technology to make businesses more productive. I'm not worried about a robot chasing me down the street, not yet. I can watch that on Terminator at any time I like. I think this is gonna be a business tool to enhance productivity margins and free cash flow. I like it. Excellent. You know, I think you're all right, Kevin. I, I, it, so, I think you're so good that the next time I'm down in the, on the Gulf Coast of Florida, I'm going to invite you over from Miami for an early bird special, and I think you'll take it. Oh, I'll definitely do that. Here in Miami, when the Fed is going to make a move on rates, we look at fish. That's how we get our zen. I look into the tank and I go, um, that's how I do it. <laughs> you always deliver, Kevin. That was great. Thank you very much indeed, Mr. O'Leary. We'll see you again soon.